Bitcoiners in African countries, including Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, and Ghana, can now send and receive Bitcoin without a smartphone phone or internet connection. Digital wallet startup Menchenkura is making it happen by tapping into the Bitcoin Lightning Network. And joining us now with more is Menchenkura Catalyst, Godatso Ngako. Godatso, thank you yeah, so good. much for joining us. Uh, I know it's it's evening time for you. Um, mm -hmm. So older phones from the mid 2000s that have well limited functionality to the smartphones out there remain extremely popular in Africa. And if that's the addressable market, how do you reach them without internet connection? Um, yeah, so basically we still have a very solid GSM infrastructure. A lot of people, like maybe 75% of the African population have a GSM connection or a mobile cellular connection versus 30% of the African population who have an internet connection. So as a consequence, a lot of businesses use or make use of the GSM connection and USSD is a perfect infrastructure protocol that a business would use. You can create a prompt and response interface, which is almost like a chatbot, but of course a very dumb chatbot with very limited options and then your users just input these options and then they are able to then, what's the word, access your business service or your digital service. So so what I basically did is made use of the USSD interface and set up like a USSD port that users could then dial. And okay, yeah, maybe so you could break the, break that down for us in, in you know more layman's terms. But if I'm mm -hmm. a user using a phone, how does the user experience work? What am I doing? And I understand it's mainly based on text messages. Yes, right. So um, one way to think about it is it's not purely based on text messages. It's like a website that is just text based. Right? And so all the inputs and outputs are text. Right? Uh, back in the day, we had web uh, websites, uh, WAP, and then you could effectively access a website over a USSD interface because the website would have a text interface and each screen would allow you to input one input and that input would be what would you like to go to on the screen and yeah so as long as you can input that input then you are able to then give um or access the next part of the service and it's almost like a decision tree or choose your own adventure type thing where your wallet gives you the first four options receive bitcoin send bitcoin and uh, settings maybe to set your username and then if you want to receive you will see that oh then you get a lightning address and you can get a on-chain address and all these different things mm -hmm. Now, do you have a sense of where service is most popular? Which countries is it being used the most and who's using it? Okay, so the most viral usage has come out of Tanzania. Sadly, it didn't have the most um, usage from a transactions perspective because people didn't have a way to on-ramp and onto the service since there was no exchange that was operational in Tanzania or on ramp that was operational in Tanzania, people couldn't get their Bitcoins to spend, although they were creating Machankura accounts and then setting usernames and all of those uh, good all of that good jazz. So um, Tanzania had viral growth, but from a us usage perspective, Uganda has been leading for a very long time ever since I started the service. Uh, but I think we just ended up in a good community there and over the past month South Africa has been leading because we've had a few Bitcoin meetups and uh, the Bitcoin traveler Paco Tele India has been hosting Bitcoin uh, meetups all over the South African country and basically driven quite a lot of the usage in the past month or so. It's really interesting what are they using it for is it for transactions to buy actual goods is it just for investment and or speculation purposes and and what well, is the age uh, range of the people 
Oh, yeah, I don't know much about the users. All I know is the phone number that they're using to access the service, right? Um, and most of the transactions are literally people just trying it out for the first time, receiving Bitcoin, maybe buying airtime with it. Um, only a few people use it on a day-to-day -day basis, like a few stores ac actually accept Bitcoin for payment. And this is thanks to the initiatives like Bitcoin Ekasi. And um, I think one corner garden in Ghana as well, Bitcoin Agassi is in Mosul Bay, where merchants use the service to receive Bitcoin um, or to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment at their stores. And yeah, there are then those few merchants who actually accept Bitcoin using the service. But if a lot of the people are just testing it out for the first time, and yeah, I think you can find videos of people actually buying airtime using Bitcoin for the first time and see the type of joy and a light in their faces when they're like, oh, damn, mm -hmm. I actually use Bitcoin to uh, buy something. Very cool. I, I, I imagine you would get a sense of, you know, what's being used for based on the size of the transactions. Do you know how much mm -hmm. money people on average are transacting? Yeah, most, most of the transactions are still very low value. Mm -hmm. And the, do you mm -hmm. have a ballpark number? Like, yeah, dollar, say, below like, a dollar range? Below a dollar. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, there is a bit of a compromise here, though, because from what I understand, Manchinkura is a custodial wallet, which means you hold yes. the keys for your users' uh, Bitcoin. Is there any risk in that? Do you encourage self custody? Oh, yeah, no, most definitely not your keys, not your coins. Um, even considering putting that in the terms of service, um, that should probably be the one and only line in the terms of service. Um, I would encourage all the users to self-custody their own Bitcoins. Uh, sadly, the technology is not there yet, uh, but um, all the pieces are in place. So I'm hoping that in a few months we will be able to roll out a product that will allow people on any device on any phone without the um, need of an internet connection to actually sign bitcoin transactions and self-custody their own coins but that's i'm really curious how did you get into bitcoin well, I was fortunate enough to be working at a research institution in South Africa. So I got to read about Bitcoin and effectively dive down the rabbit hole while being paid to do it. And yeah, I liked what I saw. Um, it was a technical research topic. Uh, the conclusion was negative, but then I was like, Bitcoin has very different aspects to it, right? So there's the economic aspect, uh, the technical aspect, the energy aspect, the mining aspect, so on and so forth. So I and took so a dive in each and every How do you think Bitcoin aspect. can be uniquely helpful to people in Africa? Well, looking at you know, African currencies, majority of them are not doing too well, right? Even versus the volatility of Bitcoin, even if we are looking at them over the past 12 months, which Bitcoin is in a bear market, Bitcoin still outperformed quite a lot of African currencies. So to a lot of people, it's, you know, a sweet escape, if I can use that word.